to put it together to where it makes sense without dragging it out too far, too long. So I ask, I covet your prayers this morning. We're going to turn in our Bibles to Zechariah chapter 4. <coughs> and uh, just as a springing board, uh, we're going to look at verses 4 and uh, 5. Praise God. I guess I, I don't have these for Josiah to put up here, but I will read, uh, praise God. I'll, I'll, I will read verses 2 and 3. You can read them in your scriptures if you got them there. <coughs> Zechariah having a vision, I suppose. It's a vision. And it says, In the first chariot were red horses, in the second chariot black horses, in the third chariot white horses, in the fourth chariot gristled uh, and bay horses. <coughs> then answered, Then I answered and said, Unto the angel that talked with me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits. Everybody say the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of, the, of all the earth. Amen. Praise God. Lord, would you touch us today and help us, great God Almighty, as we... Lord, embark upon your word. God, I pray that you would give me grace to, to minister this morning to your people, that, that something be said that draws closer to you. Help us to stay awake in the times we're living and, and be conscious and walk with you and just live for you, Lord. I ask for grace now in teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. <coughs> These horses, uh, I suppose they're the same ones. Uh, they're mentioned in the very first chapter, too, among myrtle trees. Uh, but what I wanted to uh, take notice here, too, uh, is that the angel uh, speaks to Zechariah and tells him in verse number uh, 5, the angel answered and said, These are the four spirits... Uh, these are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth and from standing before the Lord of all the earth. Amen. And uh, praise God. There's horses also mentioned in the book of Revelation. To my knowledge, uh, I hadn't spent a lot of time thinking about it since I decided to minister this, so, I mean, I stand to be corrected, but I don't recall any other time where these horses are mentioned through the scriptures. I don't recall other than in Zechariah and Revelation. And <coughs> Zechariah, Zechariah mentions, uh, the angel mentions to him that these are the four spirits, uh, and, and he, he mentioned them going, uh, standing before the Lord of the, all the earth, and it says they go forth in verse number 6, Praise God. It tells them about them going forth, and it talks about them in verse number 7. They walk to and fro through the earth. Okay, we didn't read that scripture, but it talks about them going to and fro through, through the earth. You know, there's several things mentioned going to and fro through the earth in the Bible. Whenever the devil was conversing with the Lord in Job, where are you going, Job? Uh, Satan, he said, to and fro through all the earth. You know, and that's what he was doing. Also, the eyes of the Lord going to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong on the behalf, on the behalf of those uh, whose heart, I believe, I can't quote it off, is perfect with him. He goes to show forth. Anyway, <coughs> so these are the four spirits that go forth uh, of the heavens, goes to and fro throughout the earth. Amen? Praise God. <coughs> Praise God. I... Uh, I want to look at the book of Revelation, <coughs> and it talks about, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly, and then we're going to, I want to jump to Daniel chapter 2 here in a minute. But in Revelation chapter 6, in verse number 1, where the seals are opened. And by the way, 
the book of Revelation, you know, it's not the book of Revelations, plural. It's the book of Revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the unmasking of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ. Talking about his second coming. The revealing of Jesus. That's what the book is about. That's the title of the book. It's got a lot of things that will be revealed to you in it, but it, the book is, as a whole is about the, the second coming of Jesus. That's what it's about. What's going to transpire, what's going to happen. It's got a lot of things in there, and uh, it is uh, metaphorically written you know, metaphors, types, examples, similitudes, and stuff like that, but it says something. Amen. Praise God. And many things in the scriptures are uh, mystery, but that don't mean that they cannot be understood. Jesus said it's hid from the wise and the prudent, and it's revealed unto babes. You know, prudent is wise. It's hid from the wise and the earthly wisdom is hid from that and uh, it's revealed unto babes talking about people that are sincere real with God amen so there's many mysteries and the book of Revelation it is a big puzzle to many I can't say that I ever understand it all personally I, you know and even amongst very good people godly people God Holy Ghost filled people there are uh Differences of opinions in some things. Praise God. But it does say something, and God is not the author of confusion, and it does mean something. Amen. Praise God. And he didn't give it to just keep us puzzled. You know, he has given it to us, and uh, the Bible talks about uh, the, the things of the Spirit are revealed unto us by the Spirit. Amen. So, praise God. There are things that... You can look at the last chapter of Daniel. Daniel didn't know. He wanted to know them, but some things were shut up until the time. And so no matter how many times people try to figure them out, there are some times that God won't let things be understood until it's time for them to be understood. No matter how godly and good you are. Amen. Praise God. Things are revealed by the Spirit. Now, I believe that the Scripture probably gives us uh, keys to help us to understand scriptures such as the book of Revelation. It talks about four different horses uh, that are mentioned in the book of Revelation, okay? And if you read Revelation 6 and 1, it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the, the seals, there was a book with seven seals, right? And the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, Amen. He took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And that didn't mean that there was a second person, uh, you know, in a, in a trinity of gods. It just was talking about a lamb took the book out of him. The lamb was the only one worthy. In other words, the blood of Jesus is the only thing that uh, is, is worthy. Amen. A lamb that had been slain. Praise God. Amen. Took the book out out of him that sat upon the throne. Amen. And the lamb was able to open the seals. So the lamb opens one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, a noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. A crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The second, and when I opened the second seal, I heard a second beast say come and see and there went out another horse that was red the horse was red right <clears throat> and I and I heard uh, and, and power was given uh, to him and this is the one I want you to pay attention to okay so just remember what we're reading here about the red horse and power was given to him uh, that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. Okay? The red horse is going to take peace from the earth, right? And there was given to him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances 
in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four be saying, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures uh, of barley for a penny and see that hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the, the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see, lo, and behold, a pale horse. Uh, as Brother Baxter well noted, that this uh, word, if you look it up, it's chloros, it means green. The actual uh, word that is used is chloros, and it, it, everywhere it was mentioned in the scriptures about chloros grass and different things was green grass. So uh, the, they, uh, the King James uh, translated pale horse. It was a pale green horse, what it was, okay? And his name that set on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given him unto the fourth part <coughs> of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth, okay? So... The next seal that's open is the saints uh, that have been slain or praying. And they're told to wait uh, until the rest of their brethren that should be killed should be fulfilled. Okay, I'm just giving you, you can read it all for yourself. <coughs> so uh, the, 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 the sixth seal is in verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. You'll remember... As we're reading these things, in the Gospels of Jesus, these are the same scenarios that are taking place at the second coming of Jesus. Okay? And it says this. So as we read, you can look at Matthew 24, read all of that, and then go to Luke and Mount Mark. Uh, I don't think John mentions it, does he? Uh, from my memory, I had to look again. But I don't recall John mentioning the end time. But the other three Gospels do. <coughs> So he says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, <coughs> and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell from the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. <coughs> and the heavens departed as a scroll, and is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and the ever bond men, ever free men, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said unto the mountains, the rocks fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So we're talking about the end time, at the second coming of the Lord, when the wrath of God is going to be poured out. All of these, my opinion, on the animals, the, the horses, the different horses, amen, as Zechariah, and, and again, Brother Baxter mentioned this too, uh, that I believe, this is my opinion, this part here, that these horses represent uh, the spirits that will be prevalent at the second coming of Jesus, okay? These horses, and I believe, as Brother Baxter well noted, that the white horse is Catholicism, okay? That's what it represents. It had a bow, but no arrows, okay? <clears throat> it, it is a power that it will be in existence in the end time, prior to the second coming of Jesus. The red horse, as we will discuss further, hopefully, uh, is represents communism, a socialism, communism, okay? That will be, and this red horse, note, I want you to remember this, power was given to him to, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that he should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. Amen. The black horse, uh, Brother Baxter mentioned, represented capitalism. That's why the measure of wheat for a penny and stuff like that. That is a, a system, a spirit. Of, uh, of our world today okay praise God and then the pale horse which was chloros green represented in Islam I agree on that I believe it does that is a prevailing thing uh, power in our world today so these four powers <coughs> will be 
uh, in power at the time of the second coming of Jesus. Amen. These things will be happening. Praise God. <clears throat> now, I want to look at Daniel. We'll, we'll get back to that good Lord helping. I probably won't be able to do this all in one thing. So, praise God. Amen. In Daniel chapter number 2, I want to show the image first. Hey, Brother Josiah. Brother Josiah, I love that boy. Praise God. Amen. If you read the second chapter of Daniel, you've got to understand, listen to me, I, I think things are happening in our world today. That's why we're talking about this today. I think things are on the rise in the United States of America. You know? And uh, the Bible is written from a Middle Eastern perspective. Okay? I don't know of any place. You can speculate. You can take your guesses where the United States are in. But it's all just speculation. It's your theory. You know? At least as far as I know. You know? We don't have a... I can take you to the places where I believe is the United States. But the Bible is written from a Middle Eastern perspective. Okay? With those nations involved. The, the United States was in existence during those times. I'm not saying it's not. But uh, it is written from a Middle Eastern perspective. Okay? That's the area of the world that, it, that the scriptures were written in. And stuff, and it, it, don't, it affects the whole world. I don't want nobody to get sidetracked from what I'm saying there, but I just want you to understand. <coughs> Praise God. So, uh, Daniel and the children of Israel had been carried captive into Babylon because of sin. Okay? The second chapter of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar being the king during that time, he had a dream. And uh, he's not the first heathen king that was given a dream by God. Pharaoh also was given a dream, right? Telling about what was going to happen, and Joseph interpreted that one, while Daniel was called to interpret this one, not only to interpret it, but he told the king what his dream was. The king was troubled. He had this dream. He couldn't sleep after it. He was having difficulty. called his wise men in, and they, uh, <clears throat> they couldn't. The king forgot what the dream was, but his spirit was still troubled. And so he said, if you don't tell me the dream, you're going to die, you know. And so after the news got out to Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, they sought the Lord, and the Lord revealed the dream to Daniel in a vision of the night. And uh, th so he was called back into Nebuchadnezzar, a heathen king, amen. And Daniel <coughs> told him what the dream was and not only told him the dream, but told him what the dream meant, the interpretation of the dream. And he said, and you can look at Daniel right here on the chart, Daniel 2, verses 31 and 33. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image, uh, this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, and as you look up on the top right there, the head of gold represented the kingdom of Babylon, okay? Each one of these different parts of this image represented a kingdom that would rule the earth. Now, there were other kingdoms that existed, but we're talking about the ones that dominated the earth, okay? And he said, uh, this image, his head was of fine gold, the breast and arms were of silver, the belly and the thighs were brass, his legs were iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Well, his legs were of iron, right? His feet were part of iron and part of clay. <clears throat> and then in verse number 47, the, the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God... Oh, I didn't want to read that scripture. I'm sorry. Anyway, he gave the... the, the uh, interpretation uh, to Daniel of what each one of these elements meant. The head of gold was the Babylon in, uh, Empire, uh, Nebuchadnezzar being that king. Amen. After him arose the Medo-Persian Empire. After the Medo-Persian Empire, the belly and thighs of brass represented the Grecian Empire. And the legs represented the Roman Empire. Now, those first three 
empires are further uh, revealed in the book of Daniel. It, Daniel, the book of Daniel itself tells you what those first three are. Nebuchadnezzar, he said, Nebuchadnezzar told Nebuchadnezzar, you're the head of gold. And after you, there's going to be the next kingdom, the Medes and Persians. That was the, what was it, the ram with the two horns, which was Cyrus and Darius, amen, which was the king of the Medo-Persian Empire. Those are all explained in the book of Daniel, if you keep reading the book of Daniel. And then it talked about a he-goat coming and hitting that ram and, uh, and stamping on him, destroying him. That next, that Grecian empire, the belly and thighs of brass, that, you know who that was? Come on, all you. Alexander the Great. He's in history. Amen. In the Bible, Daniel, the book of Daniel, went ahead and told about Alexander the Great. Okay? And then that horn was broken, and Alexander the Great died at a young age. What was he, 32 or something like that? 32. I'm looking at Brother Acord. He keeps up. He was young. He was young. But he had been conquered. Nearly everything he could conquer. And at, but after he died, I saw, I was reading an article just the other day on the computer about Alexander the Great, why he died or something. But anyway, uh, after he, according to the scriptures, that horn was going to be broken. And after that, there would be four horns raised up in his stead. And history declares that after Alexander the Great died, his four generals took the kingdom. The, the kingdom was divided. Isn't the Bible amazing? Amen. Praise God. Well, the next kingdom, <clears throat> listen to me, this is important. The next kingdom that was in existence, who was it? It was Rome. It was Rome. This is the kingdom just prior to the birth of Jesus, before, years before the birth of Jesus. This kingdom came into existence. Amen. It's the Caesars and Amen. Praise God. It is the kingdom that existed during the days of Jesus' birth. If you read Luke chapter 3, it starts off the very, very first verse about uh, in the days of Caesar Augustus, I think it was, the whole world was taxed. And so, remember that? Then we having to go to Bethlehem. Amen. That's why. Because the whole world, in other words, it was the dominating force of the world. Amen. This is the one that existed during the days of the birth of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> that iron, <clears throat> that iron would go all the way to the feet. It would go all the way to the feet. Amen. And toes. Amen. Praise God. At the time of the end, there would come a stone like this picture here, out of heaven, and it would do what? It would smite this image on the feet. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hit it on the head or the, the breast and arms, belly and thighs. It wouldn't hit it on the legs. It was going to hit it on the feet. Amen. And then that stone, all of these other parts were going to completely be uh, like the chaff of the wind was going to carry them away. They wouldn't exist as they have. Amen. And that stone which smote the image on the feet would become a great mountain and fill the earth. Amen. Oh, praise God. Y'all know what that's talking about? That's talking about Jesus coming. That's talking about when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And in that day, there's going to be one Lord and his name one. That's what Zechariah says. Right? Oh, praise God. Amen. So Jesus lived... During the, uh, uh, not long after the beginning, not that long, I don't remember how many, off the top of the year, how many years was it, anybody remember? <coughs> when they, whenever it started? 4 B.C.? Okay. That's whenever uh, the Roman Empire started? No. Earlier than that, I can't remember the date anyway, off the top of my head. But anyway, it started before Jesus actually came. But it, is, it was in existence during the time of Christ's birth. Amen. And by the way, you know, this image had two legs. It was the image. It didn't say it had one. Amen. Did you know that there was an East and a West Roman Empire? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. One of them, uh, the, the West would have been Rome, right? And the Eastern uh, Empire was, come on, I know what it is. I don't for an answer. Constantinople. That was where it was headquartered. 
Constantinople. Amen. So <clears throat> we have that, but we don't live during that time. Amen. Praise God. Jesus lived during the leg part of this time. But you know what? We're living somewhere. The whole world is not uh, covered with the kingdom of God at this moment. We live in this image. And listen to me. This image, now I'm giving you my opinion on this part. This image uh, was an image that was given to a heathen king. Uh, in other words, a Gentile king. A Gentile king, right? Daniel was a Hebrew. He was an Israelite. Amen. This image was given to a, to a, to a Gentile king. And this image does not display things necessarily about God's people. It displays the Gentile powers that will be in existence until the second coming of Jesus. That's what it talks about. It's showing. Amen. We live somewhere in this image. Amen. And I believe that we live during the feet and toes area of that image. We're right there close to the toes. That's, that's why I'm talking about this this morning. We live during a time, and where's that scripture that I asked you to get, Brother Josiah? You remember that? Let, let's, let's get that. Praise God. Amen. Pray, Revelation, I mean, uh, Daniel chapter 2. And <clears throat> whenever he talks about the feet and the toes being part of clay and part of iron, it says, listen to me, every one of us got toes on our feet, don't we? This image had toes. This image had toes. Those toes represented something. I mean, they represented something. I hope you got toes on your feet. Huh? At the very end, it's talking about the very end. Yeah, at the very end of your feet. That's a good point, too. Yeah, at the very end. But it was still had the iron influence in it. Yes. Amen. It still had the iron influence. The iron runs all the way to the feet and toes. Amen. Praise God. And there was ten of them. How many you got on your feet? Ten. <laughs> yeah, I got ten. There's ten toes. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, and that's where that, that stone that comes out of heaven is going to smite that image on the feet. Amen. So... Here we have the iron running all the way to the feet. And it says this re in reference to these toes. Okay? It says, and in the days of these kings. Those toes represent ten kings. Well, praise. That's what it says. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. At the second coming of Jesus. Amen. Come on, he's going he's gonna to rule the entire earth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And he's going to smite the image on the feet. What I'm trying to bring out to you is that there is going to be a confederation of nations at the second coming of Jesus in which he is going to judge them. They're going to have that Roman influence and they're going to have mixed with miry clay, which we'll get into that, good Lord helping, here in a little while. Praise God. I don't know how far I'll get. Like I said, this is probably going to take more uh, than one time. Amen. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse number one, and we're going to read several verses down through there, so just bear with me. We're talking about this same thing. Daniel, amongst others as well, there's prophecies throughout. Daniel is really uh, coincides with the book of Revelation a lot. <clears throat> and uh, but uh, So we look at Revelation chapter 13, verse, let's start with verse number one. Now, now, John is on the Isle of Patmos for the word of God, for the for the testimony of Jesus and the word of God, right? He's, he's there and he's in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the Lord begins to show these things to him. And again, the book is about the revealing of Jesus Christ. The unmasking of Jesus Christ. It's talking about the second coming of Jesus. If you want to know what that book's about, it's about the second coming of Jesus. That's what it's about. It covers lots of things, lots of scenarios. <clears throat> and I never had thought about it until, I again, I heard Brother Baxter you know, I, I don't totally see everything Brother Baxter mentions. 
Okay, I'm not, I, but I do see a lot of what he's saying. There's some things that I hadn't all got totally worked out, you know, inside of me. You know what I'm listening for? I listen for truth. I listen for truth. And I'm not saying he's not right. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm, I, I love, we got those videos and stuff. But I, you know, you got to, whenever you've got it, there's that clearness in your spirit. You know, when you know that that's right. Praise God. I, I believe that I know when the second coming of Jesus is going to take place. I don't know the day or the hour. But I'm not troubled anymore about whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. I don't have a problem with that anymore. I used to not know. I used to feel like, hmm, I'm so uncertain about this. You know, I hear this one say this and this one say that. And for years I didn't know. I just accepted, you know, what was told of who I was who was preaching to me and stuff, and, or I was sitting underneath. And that, there's n not really been a lot of controversy about it, but I do, if you, in Christian the only time you'll hear different opinions on it. I do not believe in pre-trib. Right. Jesus could come for me today. Right. You know, I need to be ready at any time. I do not believe in post-trib, I mean uh, mid-trib. Right. I don't believe in it. I, I just, you know, you may differ with me that. I love you, God bless you, you know. Pray for me if I don't have the truth. Maybe I'll see it. All right? But I am quite confident that Jesus is coming. I don't know the day or the hour, but I believe he's coming in the arena of Armageddon. That's what I believe. He's coming in that arena of Armageddon. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he's coming at the last trump. And the last trump is the seventh trump. And that's the second coming of Jesus. That's when he's coming. I didn't know why I'd ever just see that before, you know. But he's coming at the last trump. I feel settled in that. Amen. Again, he could come for me today. That means that the church, if that's true, if that is correct, that means that the church will be here when the Antichrist comes. Now, you don't like to hear that. I'll tell you why a lot of people don't want to believe in pre trib you know. <laughs> Because nobody wants to go through the, what they call the tribulation time, you know. But, you know, the two harvests that's mentioned in the book of Revelation, I had to dig the scriptures out, but it talks about two harvests. There's first, the first sickle that's cast in, and it's gathered into the barn, just like Jesus also gave that parable about in the world, the angels are going to be sent, and they're going to gather the wheat into the barn, and and the tares are going into the being burned. Yeah. And the same, the second coming of Jesus. It's not two different second comings of Jesus, folks. Right. There's only one second coming of Jesus. And it depicts it around the, in the arena of the battle of Armageddon. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And the one casting in the sickle goes and first gathers the wheat. Yeah. And the second one gathers the tares and casts them into the wine press of God Almighty which is Armageddon. Right? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So, amen. Let me get up here. Let's read. Some things that's going to be transpiring in the end times. We live somewhere in that image. Don't sidetrack from that image of Daniel. That is what is going to be taking place in the Gentile powers of the world. All the way to the second coming of Jesus. And at the end, there's going to be a confederation of nations. Amen. With that Roman influence. And I believe also with religion, which is probably Myra Clay. That's my opinion. Okay? Praise God. So, Revelation 13 and 1, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw, so a beast is rising up out of the sea, right? When it talks about sea... It, in, in another scripture, it talks about the people's tongues, nations, and stuff like that. But it rose up out of the sea. Having this, this beast had seven heads and ten horns. Just like that image had ten toes. Amen. It has ten horns. Upon its horns, ten crowns. The ten toes were ten kings. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Okay? Seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horn, ten crowns, upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. 
The beast which I saw was like a leopard, and it, which represents certain par, uh, parts of this kingdom that's being set up with nations, regarding nations. As his feet, as the feet of bear, I saw, the beast that I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, we know who the dragon is, it explains that, it's the devil, right? So it's going to be something, this kingdom is going to be something that's of the devil, that he's drummed up. Amen. The dragon gave him his power and his seat, this gave this beast his power, his seat, and great authority. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. I hadn't got that total down in my mind yet, in my understanding. So, I, And I know there's explanations given uh, by many, but in my side of me, I haven't come to a full conclusion. I got some ideals, but I haven't come to a full conclusion. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, there's the devil, right? Which gave power unto the beast, the, the, the devil's given the uh, power to this beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who's able to uh, make war with him? Who's able to come against this thing? Right? <clears throat> and there was given him a mouth. This is the Antichrist. This is the man of sin. This is the man that's going to be over it. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Come on. So this end time beast is going to have a voice. Amen. This voice is also uh, mentioned. I'll go, I'll go back to it just a minute. Let me see. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months at three and a half years. So this man that is the voice for this beast is going to continue 42 months, three and a half years. That's, that's 42 months. Amen. Let me read you real quick what the scriptures say before we go on with more scriptures. 1 John 2, 18, the, the apostle John wrote to the Christians, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist, singular, Antichrist shall come. That's the man, the great voice, the, the, the mouth speaking great things we're talking about. I'll read some more scriptures to help clarify that. He says, as you have heard, Antichrist shall come. The early Christians believed this was going to happen. Okay? Even now, even when John was living, are there many Antichrists, plural? There's many Antichrists. It means against the true Christ. That's what that word means. Okay? Even now, there are many Antichrists, whereby we know it's the last time. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, verse number one talks about our gathering together unto the Lord, our catching away out of here, what he's talking about. When we gather to the Lord, we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air, right? The dead in Christ are going to rise first, according to the Thessalonians. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the second coming of Jesus. When the Lord descends from heaven as with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. Okay? So he's talking about don't. If they say he's in the desert place, Jesus said, don't believe him. If they say he's in a secret chamber, don't believe him. So John, or Paul, is writing to the Thessalonians that no man deceive you by any means. For that day, talking about our gathering together unto the Lord, right? Come on, he's coming as the lightning flashes across the sky. He's coming back in the sky. <laughs> in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Brother of course said, that's the twinkling in your eye. You know, remember I was talking about that the other night? <laughs> Praise God, just a twinkle. Praise God, amen. Let no man deceive you, for that day, the second coming of Jesus, shall not come, except there come a falling away first, beware. Come on, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin, this is that man I'm talking about, that boy speaking great things, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, that's who he's called. He's going to be leader of this end time world government that's, that's going to appear. Okay? And this is what he's going to do. He opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Daniel also mentions this person in the same manner. Okay? Daniel also mentions it. Paul mentions it here. Antichrist shall come, John said. Even now, there's many antichrists. Amen. But he's talking about designated, there is a man coming. 
Amen. That's going to be the son of partition. He's the man of sin. In other words, he's the man of lawlessness. That's who he is. Amen. And he's going to oppose God. He's going to, he's going to speak great things against the Most High. Revelation 13, 5 says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue forward in two months. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him, that man, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What do we read about over in the... Amen. No, Revelation. Amen. Those first verses. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I better... I'm going to get sidetracked if I don't watch it. <laughs> Praise God. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. There will be people that resist him. Amen. Wait until your brethren are killed. That's what I was trying to look up. Remember that? Me reading that? The, the fifth seal. The fifth seal. They cried out, Lord, when are you going to avenge our blood? He said, wait until your brethren, amen, also are killed. till that's fulfilled. This is going to happen during the end time. Who is that? Amen. I hope it's not you. I hope it's not me. But, you know, it's going to be somebody. He's going to persecute the saints. Oh, praise God. That's what it says. You don't like that, do you? Huh? It's happening right now, too. People are being persecuted and killed for the name of Jesus right now. People are having their heads cut off for the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All those that their names are not written in the book of life are going to worship him. Right? And you know what? When you baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost... Amen. And you're walking with the Lord. Amen. Your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You need to keep it there. It can be blotted out according to Revelation. Amen. Praise God. So he goes on to say, verse number 9, If any man have an ear, let him hear. And that's what I want you to do today. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with swords must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the of the Jews? No, the saints. You can, you can stop your ears. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to believe it. I'm going to believe it pre-trib. But it ain't going to change it. What we need to do is get built up in the Lord and be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. No matter, no matter what comes in, no matter. Listen to me. You may not live to even see this. You may be gone before then. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Revelation 13 and 11, the 11th verse. Then he says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. Everybody say, ma. <laughs> a lamb. <laughs> you, Jesus talked about wolves in sheep's clothing, right? That's basically what we have here. A lamb. Well, he's talking about a lamb. Jesus was the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This one is going to present himself as a lamb. And this is the religious side of of this thing. Amen. Praise God. The miry clay area, I believe. Amen. Mixed with that Rome influence. Amen. Praise God. Beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Who's the dragon? The devil. Amen. Praise God. Don't be gullible for everything that looks religious, folks. The devil, listen to me, he appears, according to Paul to the Corinthians, as an angel of light. And if he would appear as an angel of light, it is no great thing if his, his ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness. They're not, though. Amen. They're not, though. Amen. Praise God. Jesus said you tell a tree by the fruit it produces. Amen. The fruit it bears. Amen. Praise God. Not just because something looks religious. 
Some things look very dedicated and religious to what they believe. Amen. But the fruit they produce, amen. I'm not trying to pick on any one group. But you listen to me. It's in news articles continuously of young people being molested by priests. I don't see how people can stay in that. Huh? Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So this is another beast, right? He exercised all the power of the first beast. That's the one with the mouth, right? And that, and that system with him. It's not just the man, but it includes those ten toes that's on Daniel's image and the ten kings, the horns. Amen. And he's the mouthpiece of this thing. Amen. So he, this beast that comes out of the earth has two horns like a lamb. He speaks, though, as a dragon. He exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He doeth great wonders. This one's going to do miracles. This other second beast is going to perform miraculous things. And he's going to convince the world to follow the first beast and that system. Amen. Praise God. He does great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven on earth and the side of men and deceiveth them by those that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Amen. And he causes all both small, uh, great, rich, poor, free, and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy, sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast for the number of a man. And his number is 603 score 6. That's 666 is what we talk about. Praise God. Amen. So everyone that does not follow suit is to be killed. Amen. And the false prophet, that's what he is, he's called the second beast. Amen. He had two horns like a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. Amen. He's causing the world, influenced the world by his miraculous power, by the things that he's saying and doing to worship that beast and that system. Amen. Praise God. Isn't it amazing that for probably the first time in all of history, amen, there's a, uh, the ability to number everybody. To mark everybody, to know where everybody's at. Whatever way they, ch they choose to do it, through the computer, the World Wide Web, and all those things. Amen. Amen. Even, even holographs could be presented to people be called, re re requiring them to worship the image of the beast. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly how it's going to be, but... You know, just throwing some things out there. Let's go to Revelation 17 and 1. I'm trying to hurry. Praise God. I want to go to Revelation 17, verses 1 through 5. Because this is what we're, I'm concerned about. Amen. And what's happening in our country. Amen. It says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore which setteth upon many waters, many waters representing all over the world. Okay, she's setting on many waters. <clears throat> With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Amen. And I, I believe this is representing spiritual fornication. Okay? People have been influenced by this system, this woman. Amen. That false prophet has a church, folks. And that's what we're talking about here. This, that's the woman. That's the woman that we're talking about. 
So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman. The woman's doing what? She's sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of the name of blasphemy. Here we go with the seven heads and ten horns again. She's part of the system. Come on. She's part of the system. The beast, the beast that she's setting upon is scarlet colored. Scarlet color is red. Amen. The scarlet color is red. She's setting upon this beast with seven heads and ten horns, and that beast is scarlet colored. Amen. Now I told you back when we started the very first scriptures that we read about the four horses. Amen. The third horse, the, I mean the second horse that we read about, the red horse. There was given, there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Amen. And this woman is sitting upon this scarlet colored beast, and everybody that don't follow that system will be killed. Amen. Praise God. Are you following me? Amen. Praise God. She sat upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the name of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color. These are the colors of the Roman Catholic Church. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. It doesn't mean you can't understand it. It just means not everybody sees it. It's hid from the wise and the prudent, and it's revealed in the babes unto those that are sincere and love the word of God. Amen. The Bible tells us that that day should not overtake us as a thief, for we are not the children of the night, but we're the children of the day. Come on, let us not sleep as do others. The woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color, decked with precious stone, pearl, having a golden cup. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Amen. She's a harlot, but she's got a lot of daughters. Come on, she's got a lot of daughters. And abominations of the earth. Amen. That red horse, that's what I'm concerned with, with America. Amen. That woman is setting upon a scarlet colored beast. It means to me, it tells me that that end time world government with the Antichrist in it is going to be a communistic, socialistic government. The red represents communism. It represents socialism. Amen. You look over the, you can say, oh, that won't happen in America. Friend, it's happening in America. It is happening in America. I'm trying to sound the trumpet. Wake up and realize. Amen. There's one political party that is heading whole hog, as they say. To socialism. It's shocking. I said it's shocking. The things that have arisen in our nation. Amen. I don't know where America stands in prophecy. I really don't. I can't pinpoint it. I'd like to think that we stand apart. That we are those eagle's wings that supports Israel. And as of right now, we are supporting Israel, but not everybody. There's so much anti-Semitism in our, in our United States right now. It's amazing. There was a time when America wholly supported Israel. Amen. But there's many voices out there today that are against the Israelites, against Jews. Amen. Praise God. I'm here to tell you, God's going to work with that people in the end. And we need to be a part, listen to me, of what God's doing, not what the world's doing. Amen. I'm not saying they're saved without the blood of Jesus. Ain't nobody saved without the blood of Jesus. But I believe, personally, I believe Romans declares and lets me know that there's going to be a move of God in Israel in the end time. Amen? 
There's going to be such a mighty move of God. I believe they're going to be getting the Holy Ghost. They're going to look on Him whom they pierced. They're going to turn to Him with their whole heart. They're going to realize they missed their Messiah. And all the time I'm going to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm going to be paying, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen? I'm going to be praying. Oh, they're just as bad as the United States right now in many ways. They have their gay prides and all that kind of stuff. But I'm still praying for them. Amen? There are people that need to get in contact with their creator. Amen? That made them. Amen? But there's a push. Do you not hear it? There's voices. Many people were voted into Congress just recently that are full-fledged socialists. Full-fledged socialists. And on the other hand, (laughs) folks, this is the world. On the other hand, many of the Republicans are are Catholic. Huh? Catholicism. What a combination. Is that true? It is. Amen. Oh, praise God. What are you saying, Brother Radley? Which political party to join? No, I'm not preaching politics. I'm telling you where we're living. I'm telling you things are happening. Amen. Praise God. There's a group of people in our, in our country that wants that one world government, that wants that system. There are godless people. I clicked on back uh, a couple of elections ago, and I just clicked on the, uh, where they have their conference, the, the, the Democratic National Convention is what it was, and they had all gathered together to pick their nominee and stuff. And something was said about God, and the whole bunch of them, I didn't hear everybody in there, but I heard the majority booing, booing God, booing righteousness, haters of God, amen, haters of God. I'm not trying to get you to join any political party. I'm trying to get you to stay awake. I'm trying to get you to be aware. I'm trying to get you to see, amen, how close we are. And if you're not close to God, you need to get close to God. Things can turn real quick. You can say, oh, those things won't never happen in America. Folks, there's things happening in America I thought never would happen in America today. They just passed legislation in New York. You can kill a baby up to the day it's born. They just passed that. Murder. I said, that's a baby. That's a baby. That's a human being. That's a baby. It's a real baby. It's not just fetus. It's not just stuff. It's not just junk. It's not a disease. It's a baby. It's a human being. And people have their minds so twisted and warped in their thinking and so godless that they would put that thing to death even at the last day before it was supposed to be born. Not that it's any better to do it when it's first conceived. It's all murder. It's all murder. But the twisted state of our world, the twisted state of our world, you think if they, you would have thought they'd never do something like that. If you don't think they would if you think they wouldn't do something like whoever won't go along with the system to have them killed, let me tell you something. It won't be long before they'll be putting the old folks out of their misery. Come on. It, they'll be next. Or those that's handicapped, they'll be putting them out of their misery. They're, they're a hindrance to society. That's what they'll justify it with. We're going to do them a favor. Amen. You might run along a raccoon that's been run over in the road and it's still got its life in it, you might do us a favor by going ahead and shooting it and putting it out of misery. But that raccoon ain't got a soul. But everybody that's walking, that's made in the image of God, has a soul, and it's not right for man to lay their hand upon them. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Oh, praise God. Come on. We're not just animals. We are made in the image of God. Amen. Amen. And everybody is important but I'm just preaching to you what's coming I'm just preaching to you trying to show you I see red bleeding into our country 
and it's not the red of the Republicans. I'm not saying they're any better much either, but I'm just saying it's that scarlet color of that last beast. I don't want to be a part of that, do you? I said, I don't want to be a part of that, do you? I don't want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of what Jesus. Oh, my goodness. We're living in perilous times, the scripture says. Dangerous times. Perilous times. But you know what? We've got to hang on. Come on. Amen. We've got to be strong. Strong. Close to the Lord. Amen. It scares me sometimes when people will bail out from the Lord by the littlest of things. Amen. If you can't run with the horsemen, how can you contend? Footmen. Footmen. Horsemen at the swelling of Jordan. Folks, listen to me. I'm trying to tell you, we need to walk with God. We need to, the time, listen to me, the great championship lift is coming. Amen. And you're not going to win it going out there the day it's time. You're going to have to exercise in advance. Come on, you're going to have to get ready. You're going to have to build. I've read some of the some of the remarks like those boys that just got through being blasted. They were Catholic boys, but they just got through blasted because of some things they didn't even do. Yeah. Was it Minnesota? Is that what it was? Oh, the hate. The hate. The hate that was spewed. Kill them. You know? Torture them. And they didn't even do anything wrong. There's a group. Listen to me. It's heartless. It's heartless. It's mean, spirited. Amen. Amen. That's what we're dealing with. Amen. And when that thing comes in full-fledged flow, when it comes to flow, amen, you'll either go with it or you'll be destroyed. There are some people that's going to go with Jesus. And they're going to, no matter what comes or goes, I hope that everyone in this place is that people that you're going to hang on to the good Lord and live for him and be counted worthy, amen, to be with him. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh. Praise God. Stand with me. I won't keep you. <coughs> Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Stay awake. Stay awake. Look around you. Get on fire for the Lord. Amen? Get on fire for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. He talks about his bride. Amen. She's going to be dressed in white. She made herself ready. Amen. They're going to be in white garments. I want to be in that group, don't you? Don't you want to be in that group? Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Praise God. Lord, would you help us? Great God Almighty. Oh, Lord, help us to be awake, Jesus. Stay awake, Jesus. Oh, to be conscious about what's going on. And not only be conscious, God. Oh, but God, help these, your people, to draw near to you. My God, to get power from you, to be strengthened by you. Oh, God, to pray in the Holy Ghost. To, to let your spirit move through their hearts, through their lives. May they draw near to you, oh God. Let the things of this world, oh God, oh God, become distant, oh God. And our walk with you to be enriched, oh God. Oh, the time is short, Lord. I believe it. I believe your coming draws near. Oh God, Lord, let it not come as a snare upon these your people, Lord. But oh God, let them see and walk with you and live for you. 
Oh, God, touch them even this morning. Let something be done in their hearts this morning. Oh, a driving force, God, that will help them with all of their heart to walk with you, to pursue you. Oh, God, to get fired up about you. Oh, Lord, to draw near to you and everything else. God, to become secondary. Oh, my God, in Jesus' name, there's nothing more important, oh, God, than being ready. Oh, Lord, at your coming. Oh, God, help us now, Jesus. Oh, God, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Are you where you need to be? I'm not just trying to get you momentarily up at an altar, but seriously, amen. This is not a, just a few-minute thing, amen. This is something you need to determine in your heart. I'm, I'm getting close to God. This, this is a turning point, point for me, amen. I'm going to put the pedal to the metal, amen, and I'm going to live for the Lord, amen. I'm going to walk with Him. I'm going to be ready at His coming. I'm going to watch my spirit. I'm going to watch, amen. Praise God, I'm going to pay attention to self, amen, and reach for people and have my conversation as becometh Christ, amen. Come on. I want to reach for somebody. I want to reach out knowing what I know. I want to reach out and get somebody else in before it transpires. Our colleges have pumped socialism into our generation. They have pumped socialism into our generation. That's why you see all the, a lot of the things happening. It is. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I won't keep you. God bless you. You're dismissing the fear of the Lord. Praise God.